dear chair partners good afternoon everybody and welcome to the webinar on last week i am arun from travel biz monitor and i am your moderator for this session thank you so much for taking out your valuable time to attend this webinar we are now joined by ms puna makhita account director in the last week is convention and visitor authority we will offer insights to the various offerings in las vegas through a vivid presentation after the webinar we will move to the question answer round where ms puna makhita will address all your queries just a quick note on logistics you are all kept on mute mode and in case if you have any query please press the hand button on your screen and your question will be answered at the end of the webinar over to you mr hi everybody this is poonam makhija i am the account director for las vegas convention and visitors authority um i'm here this afternoon to give you a better insight into las vegas as a destination um uh, as you know las vegas is very popular um amongst indians we have a lot of groups we have a lot of fits we have a lot of mice movement there um and now i just want to update you on what las vegas really has to offer so before i begin let me give you a little overview of las vegas um las vegas is the city of las vegas is located is uh, situated in the west coast of united states we unfortunately do not have direct flights from india so you have to fly via the two gateway cities of los angeles and san francisco from los angeles you can take a flight into las vegas or you can drive it's only a 4 hour drive and it's a beautiful beautiful drive from san francisco it's advisable to take the flight because the drive is almost 9 hours although it's a beautiful drive but 9 hours becomes a bit much after a long flight <clears throat> las vegas the city uh, the town of las vegas was actually established in 1905 in 1911 it became the city of las vegas and the first uh, theater as you know las vegas is actually the entertainment capital of the world and the first theater to come up in las vegas was way back in 1912 it was called the majestic theater the first movie ever filmed in las vegas was in 1914 please remember we are very close to hollywood it's only a 4 hour drive so it stands to reason that a lot of movies uh, are shot in las vegas even till date we also have a lot of movie stars coming in for a short break into las vegas and going back to la so you do when you're in la you do have a lot of sightings of various celebrities be it sing uh, singers be it musicians or uh, film stars <clears throat> in 1920 the first plane landed in las vegas this was just a plane like a charter plane the first commercial plane landed in 1926 so you can see how long back las vegas actually came into being as a city of what it is today of course over the years things started moved and las vegas changed from what it was it used to be a place where people would go to gamble to what it is today the entertainment capital of the world so before i go any further let me show you a short video on las vegas and then we'll talk more Over to you, Ajay.
Thank you, Ajay. We'll go back to the slide. Before I talk about hotels and other things, let me tell you a little story about how Las Vegas really began and how these hotels, the way they are today on the strip really came about. So um, in the 1930s or 40s, um, you know, this place was still like the desert and a lot of, um, we used to have a lot of these outlaws coming and hiding there. There were a few things happening there, but not really the way it is today. Uh, now to keep these guys entertained, lest they would kill each other, uh, small pubs had come up, small gaming places had come up, just to make sure that they had something to do during the day. Now the story goes that one of the guys who was staying in a bed and breakfast place in Vegas trying to hide from the law was actually thrown out of there because he had outstayed his welcome. Now he could not go back to the city because he was still an outlaw and uh, he had no place to stay here. So what was the next best thing to do? He decided he had a lot of money, he you know, made his money from all sorts of stuff and that he should put that money to use and maybe build himself a little place there. So he built himself <coughs> a little house and converted that into a bed and breakfast place where he made money and he had a place to stay. Seeing him, a lot of other guys decided, okay, this is what we should be doing. And they did the same. And these small little places kept coming up. Now our friends in Italy, the mafia, took notice and realized that, you know, people are gambling here and uh, this is a place where all the outlaws are. This seems to be like a haven for us. So why don't we invest here? And they started investing. So they started building up hotels. The first casino that came in to town, uh, into a place where what we now refer to as downtown Vegas was a golden nugget. The uh, casino is still there. That is one of the only ones left, the others have all gone. So that's how it came about and the mafia started operating there. Now we all know that the mafia had all sorts of ways of getting people to spend the money and extracting the money from them. A few years later, <clears throat> the big daddies of the hospitality industry took a look and they thought, okay, this is where everybody wants to come and spend weekends also. So why don't we invest? And that's when the big hotels came in and the strip came. Slowly, the gambling became, took a back seat and the entertainment came in. And Vegas became what it is today. So let's talk about some hotels in Vegas. I'm sure you've all heard about the Palazzo, the Bellagio, the Venetian. These are the big, big hotels that we have there. Uh, in Vegas, we have about 150,000 rooms and throughout the year, we do an average occupancy of 84%, which is huge. During the week, it's easier to get a hotel room and it's a bit more economical. During the weekend, we also have a lot of domestic traffic from California, from New York, from other states of the United States. So the prices of the hotels go up slightly. Of course, when you have a big convention or a big exhibition, which happens once too often, uh, the prices of the rooms again go up. But weekdays is a safer bet and you do get very good prices. We have hotels to suit every pack, pocket that you could think of, whether you want a budget hotel or you want a three star or four star or five star or ultra luxury like the Wynn or the Encore. We have all these hotels. Now the Wynn, um, I think the Wynn actually uh, was built, was opened in 2005 and then the Palazzo came in in 2008. So that's where we are. Today, the name of the game is refurbish, redo everything. So some hotels come down, the older ones, new ones come up or they're going for a full renovation. Caesar has been there for like 60, 70 years and they've been renovating constantly. So it still looks really new. The Cosmopolitan has just been renovated, looks fantastic. Aria is another great, great proposition to use. You could use that hotel. There's so many hotels. The strip is about eight kilometers from one end to the other. One end is where Mandalay Bay is, which is a convention center and a hotel. 
that's where the welcome to Vegas sign is. I'm sure all of you have seen the welcome to Vegas sign and that's where it is. So when you're driving in from LA, that's what you hit first. On the other end is the stratosphere, which is where the strip ends. And that between these two points, it's eight kilometers. The airport is also very close. The airport is called McCarran Airport. It takes you barely five to seven minutes from the airport to the strip. Let's go on to talking to you about dining. So we have a lot of um, dining options. These are the hotels that we are speaking about. Now we're talking about dining options. So you know who this guy is? I'm sure you do. This is Gordon Ramsay. He's just opened his new restaurant in December called Hell's Kitchen. If you've all been watching MasterChef, you know exactly who he is and what Hell's Kitchen is all about. So we have any and every Michelin chef worth their while or a celebrity chef worth their while. They open, they have all open restaurants in Las Vegas and it's pretty easy to get a table because there's so many restaurants you don't have to wait months to get a table maybe for some restaurants you need to book maybe a, a week in advance at the most but normally two days in advance and you get everything so if your clients your FITs are foodies and they want to try out these restaurants Vegas is the place to be in now after Dining, I'm sure everyone wants to see what attractions we have. So let's talk about the local attractions that we have in Vegas. So as you can see, we have a lot of local attractions from the zoo to the rodeo to swimming with the sharks to Speed Vegas to the Fremont Street experience or the Grand Canyon to seeing the Bellagio Fountains to other adventure activities, we have a whole host of them. We'll talk about each one of them separately, but before we do that, let's tell you a little bit more about Stratosphere. This is the Stratosphere, which houses the tallest uh, roller coaster ride, the highest roller coaster ride in the world. As you can see, people are really screaming and shouting when they're on this ride. It's one of the most exhilarating rides in the world. It's really high and it gives you a 360 degree view of the city of Las Vegas. <clears throat> the next is Sky Jump, which is also from the stratosphere, you will just see what the sky jump looks like shortly. Ajay, can we have the next slide, please? This is the sky jump. It's the tallest sky jump in the world. And you jump down and you get this rush of adrenaline. You can do bungee jumping or a free fall. The next attraction is the Link Promenade, which is right in the middle of the strip. So we have this promenade where you have various restaurants, um, small boutique shops, and other places to go and see. It also houses the high roller, which is the tallest observation wheel in the world. Yeah, you heard me right. Much bigger than the London Eye or the Singapore Eye. Each of our cubicles can stand 40 people. And we have 28 cubicles. It takes about half an hour for a revolution. I personally think the best time to be on this is in the evening around 7, 7.30, where you can see Vegas all lit up. You can even see the planes take off from McCarran Airport. It's a beautiful sight. You can also actually have a cocktail there. We have a bar trolley, which can be rolled into any of the cubicles. And you can buy your drinks, enjoy your beer, or maybe a glass of wine, and then see Vegas the way it's meant to be seen and then you get off and you walk on the promenade choose the restaurant you want to go to after that maybe if you feel like having a cupcake go to sprinkles the cupcake ATM yeah an ATM to get you a cupcake feed in the money choose your cupcake and that's it press the button and here it is for you 
We also have another very interesting attraction called Speed Vegas, where you can actually. Ajay, can we go to our next slide? Speed Vegas. This is where we can actually race any supercar in the world. It could be a Lamborghini. It could be a Ferrari. It could be an Alfa Romeo. It could be a Porsche. Any one of them. You can drive or be driven. Indians can drive there, yes, because our driving licenses are valid there. Actually, our driving license, the one with the chip, is valid all across the U.S. for a year. You don't really need to apply for an international driving license or anything. Coming back to Speed Vegas. Um, you don't really need any medical certificates or anything, but it's advisable to let them know if your client has a heart problem or a high BP problem. It's always advisable. Otherwise, they don't really have any restrictions. <clears throat> the next attraction that I would like to tell you all about is the Neon Museum. So the Neon Museum is a place where Vegas has actually kept all the retired neon signs. You know, Vegas is full of signs. Um, earlier in 1913, 14, later in the 1940s and 50s, we had signs which were a bit garish. Today, they've become really technology driven. So when you go to the Neon Museum and you see the signs, they're all actually depict the history of Las Vegas. So you know what was the first sign that came up and what it looked like to what the signs are today. You can see the entire gamut of signs. In fact, if you guys have seen the movie called ABCD2, three fourths of the movie was shot in Vegas. And one of the songs was actually shot here at the Neon Museum. The Neon Museum can also be used for your mice events. You can actually hold gala dinners here. They have a proper catering service so you can cater for your dinners. Of course, you can't have a late night dinner here, but certainly one that starts at about six and ends by 10. We also have another museum, which is a bit gory, but you'd enjoy seeing it. It's called the Mob Museum. As you can see from the name, Mob, yes, it is dedicated to the Italian mafia or the mafia. So it's a museum that is one of its kind in the entire world. You do not have another museum dedicated to them. Here you will find um, the torture chairs, the torture instruments. You know what these guys used to do when someone lost money um, while gaming? They would lend them money and tell them to play more. And then when these guy, poor guys could not pay up, they were tortured. So you have the torture chambers and the other torture instruments here. You also have a bit of the history of the mom here. So anyone who's interested in them, please do pay a visit there. Again, you can have your mice events here. So we do have a proper banqueting area with catering service, the works. <clears throat> Speaking about mice, let's go on to the Smith Center, which is a state of the art convention center that we have. It's much smaller than the Las Vegas Convention Center. And this is um, more towards downtown. It is um, a center where you can have smaller events. You can actually hire the entire place for a small um, mice event. Even now, when I say small, I actually mean about 1,000 people. You can actually do that here. Uh, we also have a place, a little theater, where you can have performances, which are catering, private performances catering to a smaller number of people. It's totally state of the art. There's nothing that you don't have here. So do feel free to contact me, and I'll give you more details about this for your mice groups. <clears throat> now we will go to the mother of all adventures. Let's go to the Grand Canyon. So as you can see, the Grand Canyon, there are loads of ways to go to the Grand Canyon. Three of them are most prominent by road, by air, or by coach. But well, two are by road. Um, by road, you can either take the coach, which will take you about eight hours from the time you're picked up from their hotel to the time you're dropped back. It could take a little longer also. The other is when you drive yourself, you can actually hire Hummers and drive yourself to the Grand Canyon and be back in about eight to 10 hours. Or 
that you can take a helicopter tour. The helicopter tour will, again, you'll be fetched from your hotel and dropped back and the entire thing would take about four hours. Helicopter is the only way where you can actually land at the basin of the canyon and really see what it's like. Get the feel of the place. The moment you land down and then you look up, you realize how deep the gorge is and how beautiful it's nature at its best. Trust me, you have to be, believe me that it is one of the best and the most awesome sites ever. You can actually walk the rim also. We have uh, the West Rim and the North Rim and the South Rim. You can actually go and see the rims. Um, in fact, the Skywalk that we know uh, of, which, which you can see right here with people walking on that, this was opened in 2007. And it's very, very popular. So a lot of people don't like going down to the basin of the Grand Canyon. They like to walk on the Skywalk. So there are a lot of helicopter companies who are operating helicopters. It doesn't matter what the size of your mice group or your group is. We can have them all fly down. <clears throat> uh, when you're on your way to the Grand Canyon, you pass Lake Mead and Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam was actually built in um, during the depression and it was it, we, they started building the hoover dam in 1931 it's the only semicircular dam in the world and the water there is called lake mead because it's one of the largest reservoirs of water in the united states it is probably the largest reservoir so besides for this, we have the Red Rock Canyon, which is actually sometimes called the Valley of Fire because there's the, uh, the rocks that are red and when the sun shines on them, they look as though they are on fire. You can zip line here. You can do, um, you can hike. You can hire ATVs and drive around. You can hire Hummers and drive around. You can cycle up there. Or you can do a nice cruise, a lunch or a brunch cruise on Lake Mead. What else do Indians want when they go there? Shopping, right? So we have loads and loads of shopping in Las Vegas. Right from the Crystals Center, which is like really high end with all the designer stores there, to the forum shops where you have designer stores and um, high street labels, to <clears throat> Miracle Mile, where you have a whole mile of shops, to the Grand Canal shops, and then come the premium outlets. So premium outlets, as you know, are where you get all designer wares at a very, very special rate. And Las Vegas is probably the only city in the United States which has two of them. So we have the North premium outlets, which is towards downtown, and we have the South premium outlets, which is like a five minute drive from the airport. So great shopping, guys. Save all your time and shop in Vegas. I, it wouldn't be right not to talk about entertainment when it comes to Vegas. You know, I said at the beginning that Vegas is the entertainment capital of the world. So any entertainer worth their while, be it a Celine Dion or even Michael Jackson. And I can even begin from people like Dean Martin or uh, Frank Sinatra. Every single one of them has performed in Las Vegas. If they've not performed in Las Vegas, they have not arrived. So we have a lot of shows here. We, besides for these people singing, you also have various Yona. You can go for a Chris, Chris, Chris Angel show. You can go for a magic show. You can go for an adult show. You can go for a musical. You can go for a drama. You name it and they're there. One of the trending shows is the Michael Jackson One Show. If you need to book a show, I would say book in advance rather than waiting for your client to be in Vegas and then booking. Sometimes you don't get seats. <clears throat> the next that we can talk about is the night life that we have here. We have loads and loads of clubs here where um, you can actually go and party. We also have something called the party bus which would pick you up from outside your hotel, take you to three or four trendy places 
you pay to get onto the bus, you party on the bus, you get subsidized rates to party at the nightclub, you get VIP entrance at the nightclub, and then you hop right back onto the bus, enjoy yourself. So that's a great way to maybe have some of your FITs who love to party going there. Now when you, then you've seen all this, now you are wondering how do I reach there? So let's talk about our airport, the McCarran Airport. Um, it's not a very huge airport. We do have a lot of direct flights that fly in now. Um, but <clears throat> till very recently, we didn't have. We are hoping that from India, we would have Qatar flying in directly via Doha. But let's wait and see when that happens. It should happen fast. So this is the airport. And if you see, um, you can see the... Um, Las Vegas Convention Center, very close to it. So like I said, the airport is just a five to seven minute drive from the strip, depending on the hotel you're staying in. Besides for all these, we also have a lot of other things that you could do. I've only spoken about a few. Um, <clears throat> you can actually go downtown and experience the Fremont Street experience where you can zip line. And that's a great way of actually working on this. Okay, I think some kind of a technical glitch. So I was talking about the Fremont Street experience where you can zip line at the Slotzilla. You need to book in advance. You don't get a lot of people like doing that. <clears throat> We've had a lot of hotels like we were speaking about before and the, um, I would say the most luxurious at this point of time is the Wynn and the Wynn Encore. A lot of people like the Bellagio, a lot of people like the Venetian or the Palazzo. You can book any of these hotels. Feel free to be in touch with me and I will tell you how to book these hotels. I will send you a list of DMCs who will help you book hotels you can also book them directly. Now let's end with another video before we start on to the Q&A. Ajay, can we have the video, please? So let me tell you guys what this video really meant. This gentleman in, in the video is a celebrity, very well-known celebrity, who's forever being mobbed by the paparazzi. So to run away from them, he drives towards Vegas and the paparazzi follow him. But the moment he reaches Vegas and they see the welcome to Vegas sign, the paparazzi turn away because our motto is, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Thank you for being such a great audience. I'm open to Q&A. Over to you, Ajay. Unam, there is a question by Ms. Mr. Munin Shah. How does one yeah. choose between the different hotel options in Las Vegas? Sorry, how does? How does one choose between the different hotel options in Las Vegas? 
Well, it all depends on what your client is looking at. If you're looking at a five-star deluxe hotel, we have a whole host of them. Depends on where they want to be. They want to be downtown. They want to be on the strip. Most Indians prefer being on the strip. And then you need to choose according to your budget and according to what they prefer. There are a lot of people who will only go to the Bellagio because that's what they've heard of or the Venetian because that's what they like. But there are a lot of other five-star hotels which are equally good or sometimes even better. It all depends on what your client would like. And please uh, remember that there is a resort fee that is charged besides for the room tariff. So it depends on the um, star uh, of the hotel. If it's a four star or five star hotel, the category of the hotel, your fee depends on that. It could be $20 or it could be $30 a day. Next question. Mr. Munisha would also like to know uh, what, uh, what are the number of Indian restaurants on the strips? Well, we have at least 10 to 12 Indian restaurants on the strip. Um, one of them, which is really popular, is called Urban Turban. There's another one downtown, which is called um, Turmeric, Flavors of India. We have Gandhi on the strip. We have a few more. We have Zambal, which is very close to the stratosphere, which is um, actually very close to Tropicana Hotel. Um, a lot of uh, groups actually go there for breakfast in the morning. As you know, in the U.S. and of course in Vegas, uh, most hotels don't offer you breakfast with your room rate. So you have to buy breakfast separately. Now, most Indians like a hot breakfast and our friend at Zamba does that. So your groups can actually go there and have a whole um, buffet of um, Indian food. And that may keeps them happy throughout the day and then you know, you can choose whatever you wish to go for lunch or dinner. And Mr. Tripti Kocher would like to know what is the best time of the year to visit Las Vegas? Well, Las Vegas is a destination which is year round. So there's really no best play, time to go. But having said that, please remember it is part of the Nevada desert. So um, maybe June, July, could be a little avoidable during the day because it be does become very warm. But on the other hand, even on the strip, every hotel is connected. So you don't really need to walk out. Yes, the only thing that really gets affected is your trip to the Grand Canyon. Then we always tell people who go in June, July, uh, that, you know, why don't you <clears throat> take the early morning flight? Because the sun's not up yet and you can actually fly. In. That is the only problem you have. Otherwise, throughout the year, Las Vegas rocks. Mr. Vimal Jain would like to know, is visa granted for short visit if any group or FIT booking for only a short trip? Yes, so what would you like to know? So basically, Mr. Vimal Jain would like to know, is visa granted for short visit? No, for there is group? no visa grant. Visa is a US visa. You have to apply for the US, but there's no special visa for Vegas. So there can't be a short visa. The US visa is granted for 10 years. So you have to apply for a B1, B2 visa. And it, uh, Mr. Ms. Kritti Kuchar would also like to know, in the evening, are there yeah. any activi activities to, to occupy children below 12? Yes, there are. Actually, most shows also allow children above the age of five. Below the age of five, they do not. Um, there are there's Circus Circus, the hotel where you have a circus 24-7. They can visit the secret garden of Siegfried and Roy, secret garden where you can swim with the sharks, play with the dolphins. Most places have a lot of stuff for children to do. Though I have to add that Vegas is really more of an adult destination than something that children would enjoy. Also, I would like to add that any child below the age of 18 will not be allowed alone on the strip or otherwise after nine o'clock in the evening. If they have to be alone, they have to have an adult with them and they will not be served any alcohol. And uh, even if you look younger than 25, they will not serve you alcohol, even if you're older till you prove that you are older and you have your uh, passport with you. So they're very strict on those things. Mr. Asim Hattangadi 
would like to yeah. know more about the chocolate factory which are the uh, makers of uh, various uh, like m m m m yeah. we do have which is again a place for kids to visit but really it's not something that um that kind of makes it um, a place where you know <clears throat> everyone would want to go it's not one of the main attractions of las vegas uh, mr pp khanna would like to know what is the cost and how many packs can travel at one time on a, heli on a helicopter you know it depends there are a lot of different um, people operating the helicopters so each has their own website and you can actually go on to that and find out the cost but an approximate cost of a trip where you're flying from boulder city so you're being picked up from the airport taken to from the hotel taken to the boulder city airport which is about a half an hour drive in a coach and then taken on the helicopter and the landing at the basin of the grand canyon is about 350 dollars approximately per person now miss rekha ashar would like to know which is the better tour on grand canyon west or south sorry which is the better better tour on grand canyon west or south west trip and ms rekha ashar would also like to know are there any outlet malls or night markets for shopping premium outlets are the outlet malls so we have two of them we have the north premium outlet and the south premium outlet and uh, most places are open till about 9 o'clock in the evening for shopping okay ms ashwini survey would like to know for any mice group visas are there any special consideration or arrangements no you have to go through the regular channels for visa uh ms riya rajiv parekh would like to know any offer for iata agent in hostel in hotel and sightseeing well you know we um we do have some discount structure which is for the trade so if you write to me on pmakija at visitlasvegas.com i'll be able to share that with you okay and this ankita sinha would like to know what are some of the famous festivals in and around vegas what are the what are some of the famous festivals in and around las vegas festivals events. events look las vegas has events all the time there are lots and lots of stuff happening in fact in may we have vegas on court where um, you know all the michelin chefs are going to be presenting their food you can go and taste that food but it has it's a ticketed event we also have uh, all, these are the kind of events that happen we don't have festivals in las vegas Uh, Mr. Mayank Thapliyal would like to know what is the best time to travel to Vegas in a year. I think I already then, answered that. You can travel throughout the year. And what is the appropriate number of nights suggested to stay in Vegas? I would say at least three nights because one full day goes into the Grand Canyon, and you can't go to Vegas and not visit the Grand Canyon. So one full day goes into the Grand Canyon. so about 3 nights okay. and miss rashmi jalan would like to know what is the difference in between staying on the strip and the downtown well again it's your choice um, most shows and everything are on the strip a lot more than what is downtown downtown also has its own set of restaurants some very very nice restaurants we also have a food smacking tour downtown we also have one on the strip so it really depends on what you're looking at what kind of experience you're looking at the bigger and the better known hotels are more on the strip mr push vora would like to know when is the low season for indian market there is no low season yeah we see most of it um the indian market the groups normally go in summer Well, our season starts in april but um vegas is some place that you can actually visit during the winters as well we have a lot of agents who are now operating groups during the winter as well so there's really no low season okay um, mr vishal kumar nevada would like to reiterate it on the fact he would like to know how many days uh, it would require for indian fit 
could see all said major sight seeing or oh, would probably require you two weeks but all said and done i think four to five days is fantastic for an fit to stay okay. and ms emi sharma would like to know for indians is there any arrangements for any indian food and jain food jain food i can't really say but indian food for sure but if you speak to some of these indian restaurants i'm sure they can help you with jain food as well and this uh, kanavli kankavli krishnan would like to know do we have a tour of pop pawn shop sorry do we have a tour of a pawn shop pawn. no 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 we don't have any tours of pawn shops sorry uh miss mr ravi malpane would like to know about the shows which are recommended for family and also recommended for uh, adult shows you know if you go on to our website visitlasvegas.com you will have a whole list of shows and a little synopsis about each show so you need to actually figure out what you're looking for there are loads and loads of adult shows and there are loads of shows where families can go the cirque du soleil shows almost all of them families can go those are beautiful beautiful shows not to be missed and their latest offering car is really fantastic i would actually recommend that to most of the people who are visiting vegas now uh miss kushma mehta would like to know what is the best place to rent luxury cars and on an average yeah. price yeah. renting cars is very easy and you get a car for as low as 35 dollars a day even if you want to do self drive or you can actually rent one of those stretch limos it all depends on you again if you go on to a uh, website visitlasvegas.com you will see a list of people who uh, will hire cars to you miss smith accrue i would not know the price Uh, miss smith Next akruwala question. miss smith akruwala would like to know how do they check the 18 years registration on the strip sorry i didn't get the question can you repeat that miss smith akruwala would like to know how do the how do the authorities check the eight, under 18 years registrations on the strip do they well, listen let me if you look yeah listen the moment they feel that you're under 18 and trust me they have a great eye for that they will ask you for your passport okay. so they are very very careful on that they trained to actually find out and to spot people who are below age and are in places where they're not supposed to be mr ajinkya dikshit would like to know is las vegas city tour better to see via helicopter or hop on off of honestly hop on hop off you actually get the feel of the place helicopter you're just seeing from on top and just seeing this is there i mean it's more or less like watching a video and seeing you're not really experiencing it so a hop on hop off would be a better idea miss anshu tejuja would like to know which is a better outlet mall the north or the south the north and mr nishant kumar would like to know is there an availability of a limousine ride in las vegas of course as you can actually hire any limousine the limos are also out on the road you can actually go to the concierge and tell them you want to hire a limo and you can hire a limo mr asim hattengadi would like to know more about the las vegas explorer pass sorry the las vegas explorer pass over oh, there is no explorer pass actually you need to go on to our website and see the best ways to do it like i said it's see las vegas is not huge so you really don't need a city pass or something like that there you i mean you most people commute by taxis or by uber or lift it's very easy to commute we have the monorail so you really don't need a pass you have a monorail pass for 3 days or 5 days depending on what you need but we don't have a city pass 
Ms. Uh, Kalol Das would like to know, apart from the famous Vegas events and Grand Canyon, is there any mono, is there any monuments or national parks that we can suggest to our clients? No, see, the national parks are more into Nevada, really. I mean, they're not, they're from Vegas, but they're not really in Vegas. So yes, there are, like as we spoke about the Red Canyon and everything, those are national parks. You can actually go see there or the Grand Canyon, but not really like Yosemite or anything. Mr. Mohammed Abdul Moiz would like to know how, how safe is Las Vegas for visitors? Oh, very safe, very safe. I mean, um, now we also have a few more security measures in place after the last unfortunate incident, which I have to add was the first time it ever happened in the history of Las Vegas. We haven't had such inc incidences and now we're, it's very, very safe. They're very careful. You won't see the police on the road. You won't be able to make out there is police on the road, but trust me, they're all over the place. Uh, Ms. Munia Kapoor would like to know, do only the hotels on the strip charge the resort fee or all the hotels in Las Vegas charge the fee? All hotels in Las Vegas charge a resort fee. Uh, Ms. Gargi Doshi would like to know, which one is the best casino in Las Vegas? I would not know about the casinos, sorry. Every hotel almost has a casino. We do have a, uh, we have non-gaming hotels as well, but most hotels do have casinos. The moment you walk in <clears throat> to a hotel, the casino is right there in the lobby area. All depends on what you're looking for. Um, from what I know about casinos, uh, if you are really the kind of person who likes to gamble, then you need to get in touch with the casino authorities and they take you to the appropriate place. Because the higher you are, on the lower levels, you will only see slot machines and relay tables and those kind of stuff. The higher you go, the stakes get higher. So that for that, you have to get in touch with the hotel to let you know. Ms. Pradnya Naik would like to know, are there any certain rules or restrictions for tourists to follow? No, not really, because we don't have any theft cases or anything. Like I said, you know, the police is all over the place. <clears throat> so you're really, really safe. We have CCTV cameras everywhere. So really, there have there've never been any cases of theft. They're, they're all there watching without being obtrusive. And you don't think they're there, but they're there. So really, you don't have these kind of uh, issues at all. Ms. Ankita Sinha would like to know, which are some of the cool places you would suggest to experience nightlife in Vegas? Well, I just showed you a whole list of uh, nightlife and you can actually hop onto the party bus, which will take you to um, three or four of the really trending nightclubs. One of them is called Dre's, D-R-A-I -A apostrophe S. You could try that. That's the Cromwell. It's on the roof top of the Cromwell. And it's in fact, uh, from there, you can have the most iconic view of La the Las Vegas Strip. So that's one of the places that you can go to. There are uh, this Tau, there a lot of them Tau is at the Venetian. Almost every hotel has a nightclub and each hotel nightclub is famous for something or the other. So you need to really see what you're looking for. Uh, Poonam, many of our trade partners would like to know if you can provide the contents of the DMCs and the hotels so that they can yes, you know, of course. stay. So I can end, uh, please show sure, go on. Yeah. So at the end of this webinar, once this webinar is done, so we are going to provide the list of all the attendees for this webinar to whom Poonam can okay. send the list. So accordingly, you will have all the contacts with you. Please just write in to me and I will share the list of DMCs with all of you. Uh, as far as hotel contacts are concerned, I would suggest you go on to our website and you will be able to see all the contacts there. Now, there is a few more questions. Uh, Ms. Anshan Dixit would like to know, what is the time period for visa application? For visas? Again, see, it depends on when you're applying. If you're applying now, getting an appointment might take you a month. 
uh, depending on when you apply. So there is really no time frame. But having said it, from the day you do your interview and it's approved, it takes about a week for the visa to come through. Mr. Ganapati Krishnan would like to know, is there any dress code in the hotels and specifically in the casinos? No, there is no dress code even for the casino, for hotels. Some hotels, uh, depending on where you're going, hotels don't have a dress code, but fine dining restaurants and some shows do. And uh, again, there is like a lot of queries regarding uh, if we can provide uh, information about Indian restaurants for groups and for FITs. I would love to do that. If you just write into me, I will send you a link where you can get the list of restaurants on our website. And, uh, and Kalul Das would like to know, what is the tax rate on food and stay? And is there an availability of street food? Um, yes, yeah, street food you do have. Uh, like you have burgers and you have pizzas and you have frankfurters. They're all available on the road. Uh, ice cream, those kind of stuff is all available. But as far as the tax is concerned, I'm sorry, I will not be able to help you there. Uh, Ms. Ankita Sinha would like to know, what are some of the local cuisines one must try in while in Vegas? You know, it's a very typical in uh, American city. So um, it's American food. So burgers are your local cuisine. And that's what everybody eats or hot dogs. And those are available everywhere. There's nothing really peculiar to Las Vegas. Ms. Ria Raju Parik would like to know, do we have to book show tickets in advance? If yes, then can you suggest yes. reliable show? It is actually uh, advisable to do that. You can go onto their websites and book, or you can go through your DMCs. You know, certain shows get sold out. Every show has to, uh, every show has some black days, so that means they don't perform on those days. The artists are resting. Otherwise, each show has two performances. Um, in a day, one is normally at 7.30 and one is at 9.30. And each show does not exceed more than an hour and a half. Uh, having said that, they still go full. So it's always advisable to book a little bit in advance. You don't have to book two, three months in advance, but well, at least a week or 10 days in advance. Now moving on to the next question, which is an important one. Ms. Hirani Patel would like to know, are resort fees to be paid by the client directly or we as an agent can pay to the DMC, which will directly pay to the hotel? No, that, that is to be paid directly by the client. Any more questions? Uh, well, as of now, they're like, they're up. Any more questions, trade partners? Great. Thank you so much, everybody, for being such a great audience. If you have any more questions, you can always write in to me on p.makija, oh no, sorry, p.makija at visitlasvegas.com. I repeat, p.makija, M A K H I J A, at visit v i s i t l a s v e g a s dot com thank you all that and an insightful presentation from Ms. Puna Makija on Las Vegas I'm sure you all have gained valuable insights from the webinar a big thank you to all of you and to the team of Las Vegas. We appreciate the fact that you have taken time off from your busy schedules. I'm sure the webinar has been informative and it will help you in enhancing your business routine. Thank you.